Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. There has been a major upheaval in Canada recently if you're flying advanced drone operations. Let's see what happened. In the past few days, Transport Canada has removed about 15% of the 600 or so drones that had been on the so-called magic list of drones eligible for advanced operations, leaving a lot of people basically grounded. What the heck is going on? Well, we better start with a quick review to set the context. An advanced operation is any flight with a drone over 250 grams that includes at least one of the following. It's in controlled airspace. It's near a certified airport. It's what's, what TC calls close to people, which means between five and 30 meters horizontally from bystanders, or it's actually over people meaning you are flying within five meters horizontally of bystanders. If your flight ticks any of these boxes and you're flying a drone over 250 grams, it's an advanced operation. Now, in order to fly an advanced operation, you need to meet the following three requirements. First, you need your advanced pilot certificate, obviously. And if you're flying in controlled airspace, you need approval from NAV Canada via NAV drone. And finally, you must be flying a drone that is on the TC list of drones eligible for advanced operations, and it's approved for the type of advanced operation you are doing. And now we've arrived at the problem. In the past few days, TC has removed about 100 models that had been on that magic list of drones eligible for advanced operations. It's shrunk from 642 to 548. Now, there's a number of onesie-twosie cases, but for the most part, the removals fall into two main camps. Autel drones, there are none left on the list as of now, and China-based Flyfire parachute systems, used primarily to meet the flying over people criteria. But why were they removed? Well, getting on that magic list is well, either really tough or really easy, depending upon your perspective. First of all, it's a self-declaration by the manufacturer with no proof required at the time of submission. Secondly, there's not really a huge long list of technical requirements. In fact, here they are. I mean, to qualify for flying in controlled airspace, your drone needs to have horizontal accuracy only within 10 meters. Yes, 10 meters. That's not very hard to meet in this day and age. Now, the requirements for flying near or over people are much more stringent, however, and require some pretty elaborate tests to prove that single points of failure can't result in severe injuries to people on the ground. There's much more detail behind these specs in the form of an advisory circular, but my point is that it's a fairly concise list of requirements. The self-declaration process makes it easy to get on the list, but the problem is that Rule 901.79 says, when TC comes knocking, you better actually have the test results and documentation to prove you meet the spec. And if a manufacturer doesn't provide that proof, their drone can be pulled from the magic list and they could face a $15,000 fine per model. So, according to Transport Canada, they've been working on what they call a surveillance of the declarations, basically prep work for a serious audit, for over a year. Access to information reports show that manufacturers were contacted by email at the beginning of September 2023 and given a month to cough up their test results and other bits of required documentation. There's no way this would have been a surprise to anyone who had done their declaration with seriousness. Those who had done their due diligence were able to readily respond and were kept on the list. For example, all DJI drones are still good to go. And another really good example is a Canadian parachute recovery system manufacturer, AVSS, Aerial Vehicle Safety Solutions. They had all their ducks in a row and were able to provide a package to TC within days. Their parachute systems are still on the list for flying over people. 
Accessed information reports also suggest that Autel and Flyfire didn't respond in time, even with extensions. So that's why they're off the list. I suspect Autel will be back fairly soon, at least for flying in controlled airspace and near people. Flyfire, on the other hand, may not be able to provide proof that they meet the specs for flying over people. That remains to be seen. So what's the impact of all this on drone pilots? Well, if you own a registered drone that's affected by this invalidation process, you will have received an email from Transport Canada with all the details. Essentially, that will say you won't be able to use the drone for the particular kind of advanced operations in question. For example, flying in controlled airspace. You can still do basic operations with that drone, just not advanced. And to reiterate, this only affects drones over 250 grams. Autel micro drones, such as their Nano series, are not affected. Now, one very effective workaround is to re-register your, your drone if it is affected. For example, if you had registered your Mavic 3 as a Mavic 3 with Fly Fire Parachute, you could re-register it as simply a Mavic 3 from DJI, allowing you to fly in controlled airspace and near people, just not over people. The parachute system allowed that. If you're running a commercial operation and we're depending upon one of these systems for compliance, you are probably very upset right now and quite possibly losing money due to missed flights. At the very least, you should be contacting the manufacturers to find out what their plan is. You may want to consider asking for compensation or even consider legal action. After all, you purchase their product in good faith, and at least for now, you are not able to use it due to their inaction. I'm not a lawyer, but it sure sounds like there would be a strong case for compensation. First responders flying with these models could also be in trouble. There may be a case for a temporary exemption from Transport Canada. It would be worth you guys checking into that. So there we have it. What happened with the Autel drones and Flyfire equipped systems and a few other models as well, formerly on the advanced operations list. Very nasty if you were affected and a warning for all of us to look hard at these self de declarations going forward. And keep in mind that there are other areas in the Canadian RPAS regulations where self-declarations are the method. For example, ground schools. They could be next on the TC audit list. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Safe and happy flying.